Hey everybody, this is going to be just an exciting video tonight. I hope you're going to be as excited as I am. Tonight I'm going to show you how to uh, how to get uh, time query timeouts out of a, tr uh, a profiler trace. So here's the scenario: you've got a front end, and the users are complaining that their queries are timing out. Maybe they're they're tabbing through a web page, right? The queries start to time out, but the problem is nobody has any idea what SPs or what queries or what anything uh, goes with the tabs, right? So it's it's basically up to you to find out what the problem is, or at least where the problem is. So you know, you, you trace this, and uh, one of the things you you know what you want to look at when you're in here is you want to look at uh, here. I'll show you how this. There we go. So. Uh, forget the login and missing stats right now. What you want to get is you want to get starting and stopping times. Because what a timeout is going to be is it's going to be a start event that has no completed event, right? So I'm getting for SPs and for T SQL. So you notice how I got SP starting, SP completed, right? Statement, statement starting, statement completed, right? Uh, there's the statement starting, there's a statement completed, it's alphabetical, so they're backwards. And same thing down here for T-SQL, because it may be ad hoc as well, right? So I'm getting the, the stopping and starting events. So once I've got that, I'm going to end up with this. Now, this is a fairly small file because it was, it was done uh, from a very specific host, but you'd be surprised how hard it can be, even in a, a little file like this, to, find, to match all those up and make sure that every single starting event has a stopping event, right? Has a completed event. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to load this into a table and then we're going to use a very simple query to pull this back out and show us the starting event that never had a completed event. And uh, now <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that this isn't 100% accurate because if you've got a long running query, and it just times out or if it gets canceled or whatnot, you're not going to have a completed event, right? Um, so there, you could get some false positives in here if you're going through a huge trace, but you're more likely going to have uh, a, much a much more narrow result set, okay? So whereas you could have 10,000, 20,000, 200,000 lines to look through, it may narrow it down to just a couple dozen for you, right? And that's perfectly doable, uh, you know, when you're, when now you've got to, uh, when now you've got to go investigate which one it is, it's a lot more doable knowing that something's wrong with each one of those, right? Okay, so we've got our trace here, and the easiest way to do this is just go here. I always have to find this. It's export. Uh, did it, no, it's save. Save as trace table. Okay, and then you just pick the table and the database that you want to put it in. So here I've called mine trace table Sean, right? Got it here and it's the same, right? <clears throat> Good stuff there. Okay, so you notice how the event class turns into a code. When I was in here, the event class is text but when I put it in my table it turns into a code so you have to find out what that code is the best way to do that is to look up SP trace oh what did I what did I decide that was SP trace set event okay and come down here and you can see all of these codes and you just gotta match these up so for this particular one we're matching up statement SP statement started and SP statement completed um, I just happen to know that for this example, but otherwise you could you could match up any of the other ones that you wanted to, right? So uh, I'm going to match 44 and 45. So I'm going to put stop it. So I'm going to put uh, a table called trace start for my start events, which are 44, and I'm just going to select those into there. I've already done that, and then I'm going to get my uh, end events, and I meant to say trace end. And I get my trace end events that are event class 45, and I'm going to put those into my end table. So now I've got one table with all the start events and one table with all the end events um, or completed events, right? <clears throat> and nothing else in those tables. So there's going to be no more of the none of this 
you know exec reset SP reset connection or network protocol or null. There's going to be none of that BS in there, right? <clears throat> now, since it's the query you're looking for, now if you look at this, all of these statement comp start, started and completed, you notice how I'm lucky enough that when I get these, um, that it's it's they're identical, right? So I have two exactly identical events that I can go for here with the statement starting and statement completed. So the best way to do that is to search on the text data here because I know they're going to be identical. So I'm going to use the accept operator here, right? <clears throat> and that's going to show me all of the text data in trace start except the ones that aren't in trace end. That's a pretty simple concept to grasp, right? So I'm going to get all the ones in trace start except the ones that aren't in trace end. So it's kind of like a, um, it's a negative inner join, right? So uh, when I run this, I'm going to get my one statement here that timed out. And I know this from the case I had yesterday or day before, I forget, um, that this is the statement that we had problems with. Now, one little caveat here, when you create these tables, when you do the select into here and create these tables, you're going to have to change the text data column because when it comes in, it comes in as in text and you can't do this kind of search. You can't do a comparison search like this on in text. So you're going to have to change it to in varcar, right? I changed mine to in varcar 2000 just because I had no idea how big the, the queries were going to be. So once you get those changed to uh, to in varcar, or you could probably change it up here in your original table, and then when you do your select into, it'll create the tables like that, right? I mean, you could be smarter than I was. Um, but once you get that, then you're good to go. And you can repeat this again and again and again. So you can take this one trace that you've created here, this trace definition, and save it off as like a, a query timeout trace. And so anytime you want to load query timeouts, uh, you want to look for query timeouts, you can come in here and you can and you can just turn on that trace or you can load that trace, and gather some data, and then scrub it through these tables and you'll be golden. You can also automate this. There's a... Um, there's a, an XP, I believe, There's an, I think it's an XP, that you can use to roll through all the files and, and, uh, and load them into a table automatically. So you can even automate this, right? So uh, this was a small example, but I've done this against larger tables as well, and it works like a charm. Even if you got those instances where, you know, where you do have some start events that don't have end events and they end up to be false positives you're still gonna you're still gonna to narrow your your search results down drastically anyway uh, I kept this one short so you guys have a good time talk to you later